the kingdom of heaven is at hand. At hand means it's here. The kingdom of heaven is here now. It's not something you have to wait to get to. That is one of the greatest lies that has ever been told to humanity, that the kingdom of heaven is something we have to wait for death to achieve. The kingdom of heaven is within, and it's now. Welcome back to another episode of Daily Neville. I am your host, Josiah Brandt. Daily Neville is all about breaking down the teachings of Neville Goddard, making them easy to understand, easy to digest, easy to apply in 20 minutes or less. Today, we're continuing with Neville's famous book titled, Your Faith is Your Fortune. And this is the chapter titled, The Impressions, or as Neville has stylized it here, it's the I am impressions, or basically impressing a state upon I am. Let's go ahead and dive right in. 1 Corinthians 15, 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Neville writes, Your consciousness, or your I am, is the unlimited potential upon which impressions are made. Impressions are defined states pressed upon your I am. Defined states. Impressions are defined states of being impressed upon I am. So I am the impressed state of being. Your consciousness, or your I am, can be likened to a sensitive film. In the virgin state, it is potentially unlimited. You can impress or record a message of love or a hymn of hate, a wonderful symphony, or discordant jazz. It does not matter what the nature of the impression might be. Your I am will, without a murmur, willingly receive and sustain all impressions. We're going to start right there. Your I am will, without a murmur, willingly receive and sustain all impressions. Consider to yourself the power of suggestion, a power that has been explored by so many mystics over the past many decades, the power of suggestions in consciousness. These suggestions are the equivalent of impressions. Some impressions are made consciously, meaning I'm choosing to impress upon my I am the awareness of a state of being, the awareness of possessing certain qualities or character traits. And other impressions are subconscious, meaning that we receive them and accept them without necessarily knowing that that's what we're doing. In the modern society in which we live, we are exposed to so much media on a daily basis. If you are involved in socials at all, you are likely receiving hundreds of thousands of impressions on a daily basis. So many that this, the filter of your subconscious mind can be overwhelmed and you can be planting seeds in the subconscious mind of your awareness, perhaps even without your conscious recognition that that is what you are doing. That is why it is so important to be consciously aware of your mental diet. If you truly understand that your awareness, your I am, is the power, the infinite potential of the universe, and that it is receptive without a murmur, Neville says, without any complaint, without any filter, it is receptive to your impressions then it behooves you. We are compelled to be extremely aware of the seeds that we are planting in the garden of God, which is the garden of our mind, the garden of, of our awareness. We have the power to choose what we are planting. And that's exactly why we do this every single day here at Daily Neville. We come back to these words. We come back to this truth. We come back to this teaching and we reclaim our power every single day to stay connected to the power of I am, to stay connected to the power of freedom, which each and every one of us possess. We are rooted in the firm conviction of the truth that sets us free. And this is an impression. This very episode that you're listening to in this moment is an impression upon your awareness of your power. Power in wisdom, power in love, power in freedom, power in joy, power in gratitude, appreciation, self-expression. This is your power. And by impressing Upon your consciousness and awareness of your power, you become able to direct your power consciously. And this is such a gift. Let's go ahead and continue with Neville's words. Your consciousness is the one 
referred to in Isaiah 53, 3 through 7. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone into his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. This speaks to all of the people in civilization who do not esteem their own power. If transferred their power to another, often without even receiving any type of payment or compensation for it, they just surrendered it out of ignorance. They surrender their power to another, they surrender their consciousness of freedom. They surrender their consciousness of being the operant power. And as such, this is, this is the paradigm that is manifested. They esteem not their own power. As a sheep before her shears is dumb, so they open not their mouth. Consciousness itself is not going to fight against this. It, it, our consciousness bends according to what is pressed upon it. it. It doesn't reject our impressions. This is literally our free will. We have the free will to choose what we're going to impress upon our consciousness. And when we choose not to esteem our own power, meaning we choose not to respect our own power, our consciousness isn't going to rebel against that. It's going to accept it opening not its mouth as a sheep before a shearer. Neville continues, Your unconditioned consciousness is impersonal. It is no respecter of persons. Without thought or effort, it automatically expresses every impression that is registered upon it. It does not object to any impression that is placed upon it. For, although it is capable of receiving and expressing any and all defined states, it remains forever an immaculate and unlimited potential. Your I am is the foundation upon which the defined state or conception of yourself rests. But it is not defined by, nor is it dependent on, such defined states for its being. Your I am neither expands nor contracts. Nothing alters or adds to it. Before any defined state was, it, your consciousness, is. When all states cease to be, it, your consciousness, is. All defined states or conceptions of yourself are but ephemeral expressions of your eternal being. Ephemeral, meaning fleeting, fleeting expressions of your eternal being. All states that you could possibly express now are but fleeting impressions upon your eternal being. To be impressed is to be I am pressed, first person, present tense. All expressions are the result of impressions. Only as you claim yourself to be that which you desire to be, will you express such desires. Let all desires become impressions of qualities that are not of qualities that will be. Impressions should be in the present tense. So you should impress upon yourself now, not I will be, not displacing in time or shifting in time and saying, oh, eventually I will be this. You have to do it now. Consciousness knows no future or no past. Consciousness is in the present only. It is the ever present now. That's the nature of this. So whatever you're claiming for yourself, it has to be true of you now. I am, your awareness, is God, and God is the fullness of all. 
the eternal now, I am. Take no thought of tomorrow. Tomorrow's impressions are determined by today's impressions. Now is the accepted time. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. At hand means it's here. The kingdom of heaven is here now. It's not something you have to wait to get to. That is one of the greatest lies that has ever been told to humanity, that the kingdom of heaven is something we have to wait for death to achieve. The kingdom of heaven is within, and it's now. Jesus, which is salvation, said, I am with you always. Your awareness is the Savior that is with you always. But if you deny him, he will deny you also. You deny your Savior by claiming that he will appear, as millions of today are claiming that salvation is yet to come. This is the equivalent of saying, we are not saved. You must stop looking for the Savior to appear and begin claiming that you are already saved and the signs of your claims will follow. When the widow was asked what she had in her house, there was recognition of substance. Her claim was, I have a few drops of oil. A few drops will become a gusher if properly claimed. Your awareness magnifies all consciousness. To claim that I shall have oil, joy, is to claim that I have now empty measures. Such impressions of lack produces lack. God, your awareness, is no respecter of persons. Purely impersonal, God, this awareness of all existence, receives impressions, qualities, and attributes defining consciousness, namely your impressions. Neville says this over and over again. God, your awareness is no respecter of persons. What that means is that this law is impersonal and impartial, meaning that it doesn't say, oh, well, because it's you and I know that you have a habit of victim-like thinking, this time I'm going to give you something other than what you're asking for. I'm going to give you something better than what you believe yourself to be. It's not how it works. It's impersonal. It's impartial. It doesn't care if something is good, bad, or indifferent. It will literally express what you impress upon it. You press the mold into the substance, the substance is cut in the shape of the mold. Doesn't matter who's doing the, press, the pressing, who's doing the molding. It's black and white in that way. It's whatever you impress is expressed. And this is why it is so important as we come back to time and time again in these episodes to claim our own power, not to displace it to another. There is no other. The source is within ourselves and we must claim ourselves to be now. Your every desire should be determined by need, Neville writes. Needs, whether seeming or real, will be automatically fulfilled when they are welcomed with sufficient intensity of purpose as defined desires. It is extremely important to define your desires. A vague desire is unlikely to trigger the frenzy of feeling that is necessary to become crucified upon the cross of your desire, to become nailed to it with that nail of feeling. You must define your desire. This is something that we'll get into more as we go. But for right now, consider that the more defined your desire is, the more intense you can feel that it is true now. A vague feeling is just that, vague. We don't want vague. We want fully defined. We want, as Neville says here, a sufficient intensity of purpose. Knowing that your awareness is God, you should look upon each desire as the spoken word of God, telling you that which is. Cease you from man whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of? We are ever that which is defined by our awareness. Never claim, I shall be that. Let all claims from now on be, I am that. I am. Before we ask, we are answered. The solution of any problem associated with desire is obvious. Every problem automatically produces the desire of solution. Man is schooled in the belief that his desires are things against which he must struggle. 
In his ignorance, he denies his savior who is constantly knocking at the door of consciousness to be let in. I am the door. Would not your desire, if realized, save you from your problem? To let your savior in is the easiest thing in the world. Things must be to be let in. You are conscious of a desire. The desire is something you are aware of now. Your desire, though invisible, must be affirmed by you to be something that is real. God calleth those things which be not or are not seen as though they were. That's what God does. God, which is I am, calls things that aren't seen yet as though they are seen. And that is where this cry of it is finished comes from. Claiming I am the thing desired, I let the Savior in. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Every desire is the Savior's knock at the door. This knock every man hears. Man opens the door when he claims, I am he. See to it that you let your Savior in. Let the thing desired press itself upon you until you are impressed with the nowness of your Savior. Then you utter the cry of victory. It is finished. The impressions. It is finished. I'll leave you in this powerful feeling, my friends. So much here to be felt, so much here to be understood, connected to, and of course, to claim consciously in the ever-present now. That's all for this episode of Daily Neville. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow where we go into the esoteric secret of circumcision. Until then, imagine wisely, my friends, and I'll see you in the next. 